Good morning. Um, this is Ted Holsey. I'm Vice President of Marketing at eFolder and your host for today's event. Welcome to our eFolder Partner Chat webinar series. This webinar series brings together leading experts for business-oriented uh, discussions. Today's topic is Anchor Does That, uh, Ransomware, File Sync, Backup, and BDR in the SMB market. Today we are joined by our expert, Chuck Lobert, VP of Sales and Technology at Vision Computer Solutions. Uh, before we go through today's agenda, um, let's go over a few housekeeping items. Okay, computer, here we go. Uh, what's going on here? Go back into slideshow mode here. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, um, let's go through a few housekeeping items. Why? Huh. Hold on one second. Bear with me. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. Um, uh, let's go through uh, a few housekeeping items, and then I'll touch on the agenda. Today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of today's webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We will also make copies of the slides available to those who registered for the event. We have put all participants in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it on your computer or by dialing in over the phone. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout today's discussion. We have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, but you may submit your questions as we go along, and we will try to address your questions on the fly. Today's webinar follows a logical flow. First, we will discuss um, the ransomware market and the threat it poses for SMBs. Then we will introduce Anchor and then spend the bulk of our time talking with, uh, with Chuck, our eFolder partner, who will share his experiences and use cases on where he deploys Anchor and other backup and BDR technologies to his clients. Please uh, you know, ask a lot of questions, because uh, Chuck has a lot of great insights to share with you today. So next up, I'd like to introduce our guest, um, Chuck Robert. He is VP of Sales and Technology at Vision Computer Solutions, and their firm is based in Michigan. He comes with almost a decade of experience in sales and client relationships in the MSP arena. Chuck, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay. Well, great. So what I want to do is just make um, a few introductory – well, actually, Chuck, why don't we do this first? Um, could you tell us a little bit about – Vision Computer Solutions. Sure. Yeah, we are based in Northville, Michigan, uh, which is about uh, half an hour outside of Detroit. Uh, we are a 100% you know, focused uh, MSP, and uh, we've been in business since 1995. Made the real transition into MSP about 2008. Um, you know, currently we support about 1,400 endpoints, uh, 75 to 80 clients, and uh, you know, do some manufacturing, but a lot with professional services, financial services, legal. And such. And and how long have you been an eFolder partner, and what services are you deploying today? We have been an eFolder partner for about two years now. Um, you know, we started with uh, the file sync and share. Uh, have have started using um, the backup as well, and uh, do a lot of replications uh, from StorageCraft and Aperture to uh, eFolder as well as a replication point. Okay, well, great. So we're going to turn this over to uh, Chuck in a couple minutes here for some questions and deployment scenarios. But what I want to do is just give uh, some high-level comments around the ransomware threat today. Um, virtually everybody who's on the call today um, is fully briefed on the scope of the ransomware threat. We're all struggling with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, there's we we deploy tons and tons of security technology to clients, but the bad guys are uh, attacking nonstop. They're very clever. The tools are becoming much more affordable for um, hackers and ne'er do wells of all kinds to exploit your clients, and this problem is uh, massive um, for. Um, SMB clients out there today. The, the number of attacks against SMBs continues to grow. Um, you need, you know, of course, defense in depth or layers of security to, def to defend um, your clients. 
But the SMB market really, and, and the kind of the sweet spot that eFolder and our partners serve, which is kind of, call it uh, companies with 10 employees up to about 100, is really a sweet spot in the market because these are companies that are large enough to have uh, substantial economic resources in many cases. They have lots of employees. They're big enough that there might be, you know, they're, they're kind of more vulnerable to kind of social engineering attacks. And there's lots of them. There's the SMB market is massive. Um, certainly enterprises of all, you know, shapes and sizes are getting attacked as well. But the SMB market is really a huge, um, a huge target for um, you know the you know all of the bad guys who are trying to extract extract you know do harm steal identities break into systems but also in the case of ransomware attacks infect machines and try to ransom money out of uh, out of the SMB market out of these small business owners who may not know any better and, and kind of resort to falling prey to the ransomware. Uh, paying the ransoms, and you know the, the 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 ransom the ransom figures are going up all the time, um, in terms of the amount of dollars, um, it, and and really at the end of the day, um, you know this is there are many many technology defenses that an MSP can put in place to uh, help a client, f hopefully prevent a ransomware type attack, but also if something does get through, stuff will get through. It's inevitable. Um, that you have the right backup and business continuity solutions in place so that you can restore client data, um, get them back up and running, give them business continuity, get the, get the your clients back up and doing what they do best as quickly as possible. Um, so you know just a couple stats here. Um, of course, the the amount of money being paid to the the ransomware perpetrators is going up all the time. Um, and you just data loss is a daily, <clears throat> a daily reality for small businesses. Data is being spread across more and different devices. Those devices are lost or stolen in many cases. And so, really thinking about data, thinking about everywhere it lives, thinking about how to defend your clients, um, and then also protect their productivity is a key. Is really a foundational. Um, area of expertise and service that MSPs can provide. So, um, what's often not known, I think, in for a lot of MSPs, is that a business-grade file sync solution can be one uh, key ingredient in helping defend the data of your clients and defend their productivity. And so, we're going to talk with Chuck today in a couple minutes about how he's used Anchor um, to get clients back up and running and restore their data. So and for anybody who's on today's call who may not know about eFolder's Anchor solution, what is it? Anchor is a file sync and collaboration platform designed for MSPs. So file sync and collaboration, what do we mean by that? It gives users and, and your clients the ability to sync um, work data, work content, work product between um, uh, mobile devices, PCs, laptops, servers, and to the cloud so that users are productive with their content. Users and teams are productive with their work content wherever they go. Um, they can access any number of devices from their mobile devices. You can keep remote employees in sync with the file server. Um, you know, Virtually any place the user needs to go, whether it's to the web or from any number of different computers, they can access their critical work files and stay productive. In addition, um, there's a lot of use cases and scenarios where business users need to securely share content with third parties and guest users. If you're an accountant and you need to share tax files or, or tax preparation work product with a client, um, Anchor is a great solution to be able to securely share out sensitive data, create on-the-fly folders and shared workspaces where, um, or shared folders where um, various business contributors or collaborators can, can, can upload content and collaborate together. Um, and then you can, you can basically give your clients control of all this data as a really robust alternative to consumer grade file sync solutions which can expose companies to data leakage and, and data privacy and security risks. And so um, Anchor was built from the ground up for deployment by managed service providers. It's multi-tenant. And you can kind of you can manage your entire installation of clients from a single pane of glass. 
And there's important capabilities built into Anchor, um, like PSA integration, um, the options to uh, do uh, you know private cloud deployments if that's what your clients desire, if that's what you as the MSP desire, um, and the pro and the, the service is also uh, compliant and brandable and very flexible in terms of how you price and package it. So that's just a little bit about Anchor. Now let's get into kind of the meat of today's conversation. Um, so, so Chuck, talk to us a little bit about how um, you know how you've been using Anchor in scenarios where, or talk about some scenarios where you maybe have had a crypto locker infection of some kind or a ransomware infection, and uh, how did Anchor play a role? Yeah, well, we had one you know main infection that we got. It was uh, early July. We got had a client that um, is they they manage a bunch of restaurants, so they've got machines kind of all throughout the state, and because of that, you know, they do have a, a file server in their office. Um, but we we used the Anchor product to be able to you know file enable uh, cloud enable those the files that are on the shares on the server. So when this particular client at a remote location got hit with this. It was a Zepto variant of the virus, which at the time was, was very new. I think it had only been discovered, I want to say, even just a few days uh, prior to them getting hit. Um, and so you know, we were able to use the, the Anchor product and the Anchor support to be able to fully restore them. And, and I, for one, was extremely impressed by the fact that when we called for support, we didn't have to explain what it was or, or kind of work through and try different things. The, the support over at Anchor knew exactly what we were talking about, knew the, the virus already had a process in place to take care of it, and we were able to work directly with them to completely restore the client in really a, a very short amount of time. So, and, and kind of tell us about just um, what is your kind of standard security stack um, I mean, I think that that this variant. I mean, I think that the the problem with a lot of these ransomware attacks is they're kind of zero day, because they're always zero day type attacks because they're always kind of iterating the the file types. So, but talk to us about your standard security posture. I mean, what? How did this get through? It from yeah. what you can tell. Yeah, and we did. We we made a big change with you know from in that aspect about a year ago because we were seeing a rise in these viruses, and so we we made a change and we started using Webroot um, along with OpenDNS for anybody that's on a, a full contract with us. And since then, you know, the amount of viruses that we see have gone way way down. But this was one instance. You know, as you mentioned earlier, you can put as much protection in place. There's just certain things that are going to find their way through at times, and this was one of those cases where, even though we had that OpenDNS in place, and we had that WebRoot in place. This was such a new variant of this of this virus that it it just bypassed that and, and was able to find its way through. And so you were so you had what got infected a, a, a an endpoint, a workstation, or a server? Um, in, in it this, was in this. Yeah, it was an endpoint, um, and it was but it was a share that resided on the server, and it was their largest share that, that was throughout the company. So many people had access to this share. Right. So so critical work content and you were able to use the the rollback feature in Anchor to restore restore the share um, to the the moments right before it got infected and restore yeah. all the files. Yeah, that along with um, you know you guys had already had a tool as well to help kind of speed that along as well. But those two together we were able to fully restore everything. Okay, so let's—I uh, mean—let's kind of like dig in a little bit on how how this works. Um, um, so there's, you know, basically within Anchor, there is a there's a capability called mass provision rollback, which allows you to, you know, basically identify content that's been synced, you know, from a machine, from a server, um, in a team share, um, in a user's sync personal sync folder and restore it to a known good state um, before a crypto locker infection. Um, and of course this is you know not just protecting the data and of course restoring the data and avoiding the grim reality of having to pay a ransom, but it it is also really fast and, and, and a quick way to, to restore data. So you know in terms of the amount of impact that a client's gonna have, you mean you know, not being able to access that that mission critical content, it's going to you're going to cut down on that reality a great deal. Um, 
how, how did this client react um, to, to the infection and, and how fast were you able to get them back up and running? Well, you can imagine, you know, we get a call from an end user uh, and they were very afraid that they had just <laughs> lost all of the company's data in, in this particular share. So when we were able to do this restore, you know, the, the end user themselves was ecstatic and obviously, you know, the, the leadership team over at that client, you know, we, we talked with them, kind of brought them back up to speed and everything. And they were very happy as well and, and it really helped us as a, as a provider because we were able to show them that we have the right tools in place to, so that no matter what happens, we're able to take care of them. And I'd say overall, um, from the time they called us to the time that everything was restored, I believe it was under two hours. So it was, it was wow. very quick in the grand scheme of things. Okay. That's great. And, and I think, what do you find? I mean, do you find, um, you know, <laughs> it's of course easy to convince clients, uh, you know, after an incident or an outage happens of some kind, of the need for all of this business continuity, security, and data protection technology, uh, with with the other clients who ever never had anything bad happen, how do you how do you educate them, and how do you help them make the right decisions? I mean, what's your approach in your managed services practice? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a challenge that all of us as MSPs deal with, um, and you know, you get those certain clients that just don't see the value until they need it, but for the most part, we're able to sit down. We do you know regular strategic business reviews with all of our clients, and so we regularly are talking to them about you know whatever is new in the industry. You know whatever our new you know when we first started using um, Anchor, we were going out to every SBR and talking to them about this product and talking to them about the advantages of of it, even just from a file uh, sync and share standpoint, but also from a backup standpoint and you know, just keeping them up to date on, on the different um, threats that are out there. And, you know, we'll, we'll a lot of times we'll do like white papers or case studies uh, on something like this where, where a particular user went through something like this and then we'll share that with them as well to, to say like, look, this can really happen to you as well. You know, they had all of these protections in place, however, they still got hit by this particular virus. So we have to make sure we have the right protections in place and, and so on. Okay, and then talk to me a little bit about you know how um, how is your thinking about how to use um, the file level backup capability in Anchor evolved over time? Yeah, um, you know originally we basically just use Anchor as file sync and share. We started using it as a competitor to Dropbox for business, um, so we never truly looked at it from a backup standpoint until. Um, probably about this time last year and then we kind of started saying okay well let's you know now make sure that we're also doing this file level backup because you know we're very much of the opinion that you know without going too crazy you can't have enough backup points so um, we want to make sure that no matter what happens the client is protected and especially when you're starting to cloud enable the the files that are on the server themselves as well we want to make sure that no matter what happens those files are going to be available to them as quickly as possible and a lot of times as quickly as possible is okay just you know log into anchor and there's all your files still and you can keep using them and as soon as the servers back up we'll sync it back down so we we've kind of kind of evolved through that way now the latest thing that we're going to be doing. I'm actually meeting with my NOC manager tomorrow to finalize the plan though is we're going to start using Anchor as our official default workstation uh, backup and file um, uh, server file level backup. So previously we've been using an imaging solution and we're, you know, we run into different issues with it, um, you know, devices not online and different stuff like that. So we looked at Anchor and said, well, you know, why can't we just use Anchor as our backup for all the files on any workstation and on any server? And so that's a, a transition that we're going to be making very shortly here. Yeah, and just so everybody's aware, I mean, let's, I mean, I can kind of just quickly show, um, you know, the, it's so Anchor includes a file level backup capability in the product. So for one price, you get all the uh, file sync and collaboration uh, capabilities we've already talked about and that Chuck has mentioned. Um, and then there's also file level backup capability built into the product so you can actually from from the UI or on a specific workstation or from the management console or from a particular workstation or server you can go and identify certain uh, files and folders and directories 
of data that you want backed up on a file level basis. So it's it's kind of like a continuous backup. It's not a, it's not a scheduled backup. So it's going to be happening in kind of real time in the background. Um, but it's a you know fully included file level backup product um, that allows you to you know protect specific files and folders on a machine that may not be kind of in the sync folder for the user or, um, or in a team share from the server. So uh, that's how it works, um, and it's included. Um, you know, it's included in the product without any extra um, cost whatsoever. Um, so how how do you see this fitting in? I mean, how do you see? Are you going to deploy it as? Is it going to become a standard component that every workstation that you manage utilizes, or how's that going to work? It is. Yeah, we're just going to include it as a part of our managed service offering. So every workstation, every server that we support is also going to have Anchor in it. And we're going to include it as a backup offering, but then we're going to be able to give them the added benefit of, okay, well, you can also make these files available anywhere on any device and so on. Right. And so tell me a little bit about, uh, before we talk about file server enablement, just talk to me about um, your experience with, you know, clients of various kinds using the file sync and collaboration capabilities. How easy is it for people to learn? How much training? I mean, how much does their workflow change, if any? And 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 how, is there tra how much you know tra you know what's your approach for training and deployment deploying a file sync solution out to your clients? Yeah, it's what we're what we find is. Probably 80% of the people out there have used Dropbox, you know, at home or something along those lines. So transitioning them over to Anchor, there's very little training required. Um, mm -hmm. We do provide training anytime that we roll somebody out, just to make sure that they're aware, because it's got different features than something like Dropbox does. So you know, how to share a file, how to share a file securely, different things like that that we'll go through and just kind of go from user to user, just to make sure that they're comfortable with it and that they they know everything that they can do with it. Um, so that's, I mean, but as far as uh, we find that it's really big with particularly, I would say, legal and financial services, the people that are really concerned with security. They want to be able to share files outside of their company but want to be able to do so in a secure manner. You know, a lot of those clients are used to using like a VPN to connect in to work remotely. So they love being able to just open up, you know, whether a website or their tablet or their phone or whatever, and access their files. You know, if they're, right. um, you know, preparing for a case, they can just open up the the files on their mobile device and keep working. So that's been one of the big things I think that's been a selling point for us. And then I would say also the the file server enablement's been big for us as well. Now, now tell me a little bit. Are you, you know, so you said that. You know, I mean, the 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 good news is, is that kind of consumer grade file sync solutions have kind of educated users on some of the the kind of fundamentals of how these solutions work. Are you going into clients and also blocking and preventing things like Dropbox from being used on on corporate machines or in their networks? We leave, we leave that to the client, but it is a recommendation that we make. Yes. Okay, and then what what are your what are your standard tools to do that? I mean, are you blocking it at the firewall? Or are you using your RMM tools to go in and remove? If the client wanted to prevent, what 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 is your preferred technique? We will use at a minimum. We'll use the RMM and the firewall. Um, if they want to really take it a step further, then we'll even put in um, you know like another piece of software that just monitors what's on that on every machine you know, and what they're doing on it and the ports and all that kind of stuff, even outside for just basically to a little bit of a higher level than the RMM. Okay. And then what what, what RMM tool do you use? We uh, use LabTech. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, file server enablement. Can you um, kind of share um, how broadly you've deployed that or, or what are the common use cases with file server enablement? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's you know one of the big selling points for us, especially with you know something that's with a different file sync tool. Is most of them don't do this, so that's been you know a really large seller for us. So we we use it very um, extensively. You know, pretty much any client that has Anchor that has a server, we've got the the file server enablement on there as well, um, and they love it because you can take all of your shares that are on that server, and you now you make them available regardless of where they're at and, and what device they're on, and they don't have to worry about trying to go through a VPN. It's still secure, 
and so they it, it just kind of opens them up to be able to work from anywhere and, and that's you know, like I say has been one of our biggest selling points when it's come to uh, anchor right and I think um, you know for a lot of organizations the um, you know the challenges with I mean more and more organizations today are highly distributed more and more uh, critical employees are creating content and they're they're remote and I think one of the big challenges everybody's had is that historically like using a file server with a VPN um, you end up with a lot of data silos you end up with a lot of critical content siloed off um, on machines people who don't VPN don't drop off critical content that you know other team members might need and file server enablement allows you to map uh, the files on a server into team shares in the anchor service and then um, all of the remote users are always in sync, whether they're just kind of the recipients of content and need access to it, or whether they're creating content that people back at headquarters might need. That's the beauty of file server enablement, is you, for the users who are in the headquarters, you can keep all the great benefits of a file server, fast access on the LAN, et cetera, um, but you, you avoid all these problems with VPNs and the, with users not you know, dropping off content to the file server. Um, and the like uh, because of file server enablement. So, um, how, how broadly um, how broadly have you deployed file server enablement? Um, we have it pretty much every single client. Um, you know, we have a couple of clients who just don't have a server, and, and so obviously we don't do it there. But um, other than that, it's it's out there at you know, I'd say of our entire client base, probably about forty fifty percent, but um hundred percent of the anchor clients that we have that have a server. Great. Okay. Um, so let's kind of change gears and kind of talk about, you know, kind of this whole spectrum of, of kind of like business continuity. Um, wh what do you do for BDR um, today? I mean, what the clients where you're using either um, Shadow Protect or Aperture in, I mean, wh what's the profile of those kinds of clients and what are you protecting in most cases? Um, I mean, anybody that's got a server, you know, obviously we, we want to, we always tell people we got to make sure that you've got an on-site backup and that you've got a remote backup. And then, like I mentioned, a lot of times we'll add that file level backup as well. But we, when we're onboarding somebody, we'll sit down and we'll talk to them about what their expectations are for, our, for recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives. And so we kind of customize the backup solution to meet those expectations. So we do a lot of... Um, a bit of Aperture, we're doing a lot more of storage craft and, and every single deployment that we have out there of either of those products, we always add on the off-site replication um, to eFolder because that's that, that uh, remote backup piece as well as that business continuity piece because now we can actually turn those uh, virtual servers on in the eFolder cloud as well. So it's, it's been you know, it's, it's really changed the way that we've done backup altogether because previously, you know, we were at a point where we were doing image-based backups to like a network attached storage device that they would sw swap out once a week for that off-site piece. So, you know, kind of migrating to more of a every time it backs up, it also replicates offline. And now we've got this extra capabilities with that backup offline has really allowed us to, to protect our clients much, much better than, than previously. And how do you how do you decide when to put in uh, Shadow Protect from Storagecraft or Aperture? I mean, what, what are there different use cases for each one of those packages? No, honestly, for us, um, we started off with Aperture many years ago before Dell had bought them, um, and we've continued using Aperture. But um, we've just with our transition from Kaseya to LabTech, we also kind of started that transition from Aperture to StorageCraft as well. And so it's more just a timing thing. So anybody new that we're signing on is going to StorageCraft, and we're slowly migrating, um, you know, to StorageCraft. And a piece of it too was once eFolder added that option to be able to replicate StorageCraft, now that kind of opened up that option as well for us. Right. And just for you know everybody listening in today, um, you know, BDR for you know, eFolder has a very broad and open BDR strategy where we support um, several different software packages that are popular with MSPs with a backup and disaster recovery cloud service. So we call it BDR for Shadow Protect or BDR for Aperture, and um, uh, and we also support Acronis and Veeam and Replibit. So five different flavors of software where we 
we, you know, in some cases we bundle the software, in other cases the MSP sources the software from other distribution channels, and then, um, but in every case, all of the data gets backed up to the eFolder cloud, and then uh, in the context of a disaster, um, that data can be virtualized in our continuity cloud um, to provide kind of the utmost in business continuity to a client. Um, so, so, is, so I guess today, um, you know, so what we're going to see in probably a lot of your clients is you're going to have both Anchor and some flavor of BDR deployed in, in many cases. Yes. And and do you see? Do you also? I guess what do you? What, what about kind of? Are there are there instances where you're maybe decommissioning um, on-premises servers for clients? because maybe it was just a file server or something and you're just using Anchor instead going forward. Yes. Um, in fact, I ju we just had a conversation um, prior to this meeting um, with my NAC manager because we're rolling out a new client and he was asking, okay, well, what do they have over there? What do they have? Do they have a server? And my answer was not when we're done because we're going to move move them to Anchor because that's effectively, you know, all it was was a DC and, and file share and so we're going to you know, kind of move the DC pieces to Office 365 and move the file pieces over to uh, Anchor. And that was really a good solution for them because they, this particular um, client is, uh, they do missionary work and they they go throughout Africa and such. So they obviously they aren't they don't have good connections all the time and they just need to be able to have their files on their computer. But they want them to be able to sync back to the office to send pictures and stuff like that so they can update their website and so on. So it was really it's going to be a great solution for them and they're really excited about it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pricing and packaging. How how do you um, how do you price and package these various services, or do you kind of do an all-in bundle? How how's that work today? The way that we do it today, we do sell Anchor as its own product. Um, you know, we rebrand it, but we we sell it as its own thing. Now, as I mentioned, moving forward, we're going to make it just a part of our um, managed services package. Uh, and then we, we actually even have some of our clients that have come to us because their clients want the product and so we kind of resell it through them and we've actually even had other MSPs come to us and want to buy it through us. So we may still do it um, separately as well, but it's going to be packaged moving forward. Aside from that though, we sell it separately and you know it's one of the things that we really love about it because we, prior to coming to Anchor, we were a Dropbox for business partner, but the margins were just way better with Anchor and it's just a better solution as well. So we, you know, we we tend to average 60 to 65 percent margins um, across the board when it comes to Anchor. Okay, great. And then and then what about in BDR? How is that? How's that price? How you how do you price and package BDR services today? Um, so the the software itself, like in you know, if it were StorageCraft, would be included in our um, managed services package, but the offsite replication we do sell separately and we just we sell it in blocks of space basically, like blocks of 250 gigabytes. Um, and again, you know, there with um, with replicating to Anchor, you know, we make pretty much the same profits there too. It's about 60 to 65 percent profits there as well. Okay, great. So um, can you talk a little bit about your experiences with eFolder support? Yeah, I mean, for one, thankfully we don't have to use it that often because you know the product just it really just works. Um, but when we have had to use it, like in this instance with this um, ransomware, you know, I was extremely suppressed. You know, uh, uh, extremely impressed. Um, you know, and I was not involved with that exact case, but afterwards, you know, I followed up on it and the techs kind of brought me up to speed and you know they were blown away by the fact that when we called there was already a process in place there was already tools they already and, and the the engineer on your guys' side just totally took it and walked us through the entire uh, experience and got everything going so it's it's always been great and I know when we first got going with anchor you know I worked with support um, from time to time just you know making sure I knew the product and kind of going through a few different things and we've we've never had a bad experience when it comes to the support over there okay um, let's hear so what I want to do now is kind of transition into full-blown Q&A here so encourage everybody on the line I'm looking here at the Q&A log and I'll go through um, I guess so, so let me just start uh, peppering you with questions here, Chuck. So I guess Russell wants to know, um, I mean, do you feel like, I mean, his, his specific question is, are you going to move away from Shadow Protect for backups 
and use Anchor instead. So it's more, I guess, explain kind of where you see the best use cases for image-based backup and where you see the best mm -hmm. uses for fi file-level backup. Yeah, I think um, for us, you know, as long as there is a server on site, we will probably always do both um, just because, you know, we want to make sure that we're protected, like I, like I mentioned earlier, kind of as much as possible. So there's instances where that file level backup is going to be your quickest way to get back up and running and, and keep working. And there's instances where, you know, if the entire server crashes, you want that image level backup. So for us, we will always do both, um, at least I would say always, at least in the foreseeable future. Um, I don't ever see us going away from using Anchor, and I'd be surprised if we ever went away from doing a, an image-based BDR along with Anchor, just because, like I say, we, we always want to look at it from, okay, what's the quickest way to get this person up and running? And traditionally, we're going to use Anchor as often as possible, uh, except for in the instances where maybe the, the server's blue screening or it's just totally crashed, something along those lines where without a new inch base backup, we might have to do a reload. Now we're able to to do that. But what's nice is when, you, when we file server enable all of those files, um, we're able to keep the the users working in the files, and then as soon as that server's back up and running, it'll sync down the changes, and so effectively, it's like their server never went down. Great. Um, let's see here. So um, Dave wants to know: Can you speak to cases where clients have very large data sets, like a like two terabytes of files? And he says, not very practical to have all that data synced uh, to remote devices. So yes. And that's honestly that's another reason why we went to Anchor because they have the av availability to be able to use a web dev connection so where you can set it up just like it's a normal network share. Um, and we've got files that are even engineering based, um, you know, AutoCAD users and such that will use it in that type of a setup. And you know, when we first kind of tested it and and such, we were worried about performance with that, but so far they've been really happy with it. So it allows you to take those large sets of data and still move them out to the cloud, still make them available anywhere, but you don't actually have to sync them down to that computer. So if you've got a terabyte of data and a 300 gig hard, hard drive, you can still do that. Right, and I guess the other, the other really important feature that kind of solves some of the same problems is selective sync. So you know, on an on an individual user's um, team share or an individual user sync folder, or in the case of a team share, um, administrators or users can decide which folders actually get synced down to a machine. You know, to solve this big problem, which is if you've got big data sets that may not be frequently used, and you only want to maybe access select files, but you don't want the entirety of that data set synced down to a machine you can selectively do that on a team share or a or a folder level basis so pretty critical when you start dealing with large uh, you know audio visual files videos that sort of thing or CAD files and you know special files that can be quite large um, you know or, or instances where the client just has a ton of that sort of content so uh, let's see here um, let's see um, um, so just, I guess, what's your experience? A couple questions around just the performance of WebDAV. Have you had good luck with it? Um, have there been any performance issues or speed issues? I mean, obviously, it's going to be very reliant on your internet connection. But what I've experienced, because I, mean, I even use it myself, what I've experienced is as long as you've got a, a good internet connection, I, I've not noticed um, really any performance issues whatsoever. Um, you know, uh, again, it's if you're if you've got a spotty Wi-Fi or if, if you just don't have a good internet connection, then yeah, you're probably going to see some issues. But that's where you can even you know access the the data through the web and download them and work on them and such. But personally, I've not seen performance issues um, really at all. Right. So, and I guess Robert, Rob, there was a follow-on question from Robert just about, you know, if you don't sync, if you say do a selective, if you use selective sync, I mean, it, how do you access those files? Well, you, you can access them through the web interface um, is a very common scenario. If you've got, like we see this a lot with video content um, where, you know, people will decide not to sync something down, but, you know, selectively you want to go in and grab a certain file and you can just download it via that interface as well. So. 
Um, just kind of a, a different set of questions, uh, but just more about kind of comparing Anchor to other solutions on the market. Um, you know, specifically, you know, what do you see as the big advantages over something like OneDrive for business or Dropbox for business? Um, when it comes to OneDrive for business, I would say, you know, my personal experience and the experience I've seen for, for clients that have, have tried to use it is it's just not the most reliable tool. Um, you know, it doesn't have the most reliable sync. There's plenty of times where personally it'll just kind of stop working for me for a period of time and then start working again. Um, you know, when it comes to Dropbox for business, the biggest selling factors when we go up against that for us would be, you know, the file server enablement, the ability to back up the computers, um, just built right into the product. Um, you know, you can you can share a little bit more securely. You have a little bit more control over it. Um, the 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 techs love it because when we were with Dropbox for business, they constantly complained about the the ability to support the end users and just how it wasn't real easy and now you know it's it's extremely easy through the portal that we get and everything's all in one place and um, so we've seen a, a big uh, from from the text they they've definitely like loved the change and and how how big is your company how many folks do you employ today we have 14 people okay Okay. Yeah. I mean, just the name of the game in this business is controlling those labor costs, right? And yeah. and being able to you know deploy something that is easy enough for the users to use correctly, that's secure, gives you all these capabilities around recovery and and continuity, but is also something that you can support in a very fast manner because you don't want to be eaten alive on the labor costs trying to keep something up and running. So, um, yeah, so let's see here. Just, big that's been a big thing for us. I mean, everything that we do, all of our tool sets across the board and all of our offerings across the board, that's how we look at it. Because our actual help desk consists of, you know, three techs and then the help desk manager, and that's supporting 1,400 endpoints. So we have to make sure that we've got really good tools in place to be able to, you know, obviously keep that headcount down. Right. Um, and how do you how do you brand? I mean, ha have you branded the Anchor solution as your own unique offering? Because that's another capability in the product, which a lot yes. of the MSPs like. Yes, we do. You know, so it's got you know down in, when it's the logo's down by the clock. It's got our logo there. It, if you hover over, it's called Vision File Box. That's a, that's how we sell it. The website, same thing. It's got our logo on it. It's known as uh, Vision File Box mobile app. When you log into it, you see our logo. So yeah, we have we have branded it. We've we've even had clients that have wanted us to brand it for them, and we've we've done that as well. But traditionally, we just brand it uh, for us. Okay. All right. So one one thing I want to do is I want to share with everybody. So today on today's webinar. Um, I just got to quickly somehow get this. Oh, let's see. Let me try to do this. I should have done this beforehand, but um, okay. Now I can grab it. Um, so this URL. Um, let me just move this box over. Sorry about this. I was supposed to have done this before we hopped on here, everybody. But my apologies. Oh, okay. Here we go. This URL. Um, I'm just gonna send this to everybody so if you are not currently if you are not currently did that work let's see here um, why is this let's see here uh, let's see I can't tell is the URL coming through there in the chat no. window Oh. It's not. I wonder why it's not. Let's see here. Let's figure this out. So this is a promo item, so I want to make sure everybody gets this. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but there we go. All right. So um, why did it paste it twice? Well, let me try that again. Um, anyway, that URL there, um, what I want to do is share with you, um, if you're not yet using Anchor, um, as an eFolder partner, um, we want to offer you a special promo for uh, participating in today's webinar. Um, here's how it works. Basically, if you uh, set up an appointment um, with a product specialist to do a live demo of Anchor um, between now and September 15th, and you end up signing up for Anchor, 
um, in September or October 2016, we will give you the second month for free. Um, so you know when you sign up, that's a standard offer, but the 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 that's the carrot. But the hook, of course, is that you do need to set up a demo uh, between now and September 15th with one of our product specialists. So just wanted to highlight that as um, as the offer. You can access the URL right there in the chat window. Sorry for the logistical problems. Um, we'll take probably. Let me just look at the Q and A log. Um, Let's see here. Um, okay, um, just a quick, uh, quick, quick note. Um, if you do have any uh, ideas for the eFolder team on future webinars that you would like, um, uh, that you would like to see, or topics you'd like to explore, um, go ahead and send a, an email to webinars at eFolder.net. Um, and with that, I'm gonna kind of close things out here. Chuck, thank you very much for uh, your great insights and all the cool ways you're using these different eFolder services. So thank you very much for sharing today with the other partners. Happy to be on. Okay, um, so with that, this uh, concludes another eFolder partner chat webinar. Um, this is Ted Holsey, Vice President of Marketing, signing off. Everybody have a great day. Thanks a lot now. Take care.